It's Thursday, May 12, and time for your Barbados Today News Update. Don't drop your guard, the head of the COVID-19 monitoring unit, Ronald Chapman, today challenged Barbadians to protect themselves from the coronavirus. New infections continue to be high, averaging around 500 per day, and he's concerned that too many people are not sticking to the protocols. What is uh, a little disturbing is that we've, we're seeing persons um, relax in terms of the, uh, of the mask wearing, and we're seeing some places which are also relaxing the implementation of the hand sanitizing. And this is critical in the fight against COVID-19. Um, we are also seeing uh, places like uh, public transport, where we're seeing overcrowding on, on public transport again. So that is, those are some things that we have some issues with. Uh, what we have been doing at the unit is that we have been focusing our attention in areas where there's high vulnerability, um, uh, old age, uh, elderly care facilities, um, the schools, the nurseries, and places like that. He stressed the need for personal responsibility amid complaints that some people have not been complying with the mask mandate. People have to be, take responsibility for themselves. Um, the Ministry of Health can't do it alone. Um, I, 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 me, the COVID unit cannot be there with people every step of the way. People have to make that decision as to who they will, who they will have conversation with, and whether or not they have conversations with persons who are not wearing masks. And this is the, at the end of the day, this is this is this is the important thing. How are we maintaining those protocols that allows us to to mitigate the spread of COVID? Barbinians now have more access to a wider range of online courses to upgrade their skills. The National Transformation Initiative and the U.S.-based online course provider Coursera officially launched Phase Two of their partnership this evening. Director of Coursera's International Public Sector, Matt Klein, praised the government's efforts to ensure that the country's workforce can benefit from digital education. Digital education is a transformative opportunity for empowerment. And while talent is distributed equally around the world, opportunity is not. Over the past week, we've had the pleasure of meeting with the ministries of education, labor, youth and sports, innovation and smart technology, tourism, agriculture, foreign trade and business development, people empowerment and elder affairs, environment and beautification, foreign affairs, public service, the Barbados Community College, and Chamber of Commerce and Industry, representing companies across the country. And again and again, we heard the same refrain, excitement about the impact of the NTI program because these are exactly the skills needed in every company, agency, and citizen. Prime Minister Mia Motley is pleased with the initiative's success so far, but she wants to see more Barbadians study the citizenship module being developed by NTI. We are in the business of giving Bajans the opportunity to be the best that they can be, or in the language of NTI, to be star Bajans so that you can command jobs not just locally, not just regionally, but internationally. I want to say to you that I expect those numbers with financial management to increase because the cabinet has already agreed on a new financial literacy program to complement the trust loans program that we have been executing where we take a chance on ordinary Bajans from coconut vendors, the people frying fish cakes, the people doing all kinds of things across the country because this is how you get to the next level and our duty is to carry each and every Bajan to the next level. Similarly, I expect that the citizenship modules must be ready for September at both primary and secondary level so that every student in school at both the primary and then reinforced at the secondary level will have the opportunity to take the citizenship module. And thirdly, I am asking the NTI to enter into discussions with all of our tertiary institutions, public and private, to ensure that the citizenship module becomes a base course, irrespective of whatever else a student is doing. 
Government will be taking action to ensure the health sector can withstand the impact of climate change. Health and Wellness Minister Ian Gooden Edgel disclosed today that a climate risk assessment of the sector will soon take place as government moves to develop a health national adaptation plan. He was addressing a symposium held under the theme, Building One Health Partnerships for Adaptation to Climate Change. The development of the health national adaptation plans as a critical chapter in wider national adaptation plan is currently the primary strategy being pursued in efforts to commence the building of resilience in the health sector. Consequently, there are plans to conduct a comprehensive climate risk vulnerability assessment across the entire health sector, which further demonstrates this ministry's commitment to building climate resilience in the interests of preserving public health. There is much work to be done, and the Ministry of Health and Wellness cannot do it alone. The path towards building resilience and adapting to climate change in the health sector must be paved with cooperation and partnerships between sectors, including agriculture, environment, water resources, finance, and others. On this International Nurses' Day, Three Barbados Community College second-year nursing students were awarded scholarships by First Caribbean International Bank. The $2,000 scholarships, which cover registration fees at the BCC, books and uniform, is in memory of a frontline worker, Ramona Marshall, who died from COVID-19 on Valentine's Day last year. First Caribbean's Managing Director Donna Wellington noted the worldwide shortage of nurses and expressed delight that a male student nurse was among the awardees. I am also happy to see at least one male student nurse here today in this scholarship lineup. Yes, we know it can be a proficient scene for many females, but I'm sure that our tutors here can tell you that a myriad of opportunities within the nursing profession for men. There are a myriad of opportunities within the nursing profession for men, and they need men in various areas like emergency care, intensive care, mental health care and so on and so hopefully this year the intake of male nurses will be higher we may even consider making a special incentive award for men to, to really push this scholarship winner mark yearwood who spoke on behalf of the other awardees is proud of his chosen profession as prospective nurses and nursing assistants we have this intrinsic desire to get out into the field of nursing and apply holistic care we have this urge to get out into the field of nursing and foster intimate and genuine patient-nursing relationships that strengthen their hope in the healthcare system. We are often posed with the question, why, why do you want to become nurses? I think that the better question would be, why would we want to become anything else? There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sardine. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity, and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen. Nature's ultimate water. To regional news, air traffic controllers in Jamaica are on strike. We get the details in this report from Television Jamaica. The country's airspace and the tourism sector could be jeopardized following industrial action by the Jamaica Air Traffic Controllers Association, JATCA. On Wednesday night, the island's airspace was closed as air traffic controllers scaled back service to protest operational breaches at the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority, JCAA. The airspace reopened at 7 this morning. However, it's understood 
the air traffic controllers were informed by the JCAA's management that the radar system used to man the airspace is faulty and could malfunction. It's reported that since yesterday, the workers decided to stop carrying out radar services, leaving management personnel to carry out those duties. When contacted, President of the Jamaica Air Traffic Controllers Association, Kurt Solomon, confirmed that the group served an ultimatum on the JCAA to address the deficiencies with the equipment. What that means is that currently in our, what we call our radar room, the air traffic controllers are present at work, but they are not taking position responsibility. The association was recently advised by the technical teams from the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority that the radar system will fail. It has a defect. We had opted to retrofit our radar systems with new equipment. It's not working out. We have been having constant problems from, well, since 2017 with the systems. We have been in constant dialogue with the management about it. Mr. Solomon said the air traffic controllers decided to take action as no time frame was given when the radar equipment would be repaired. On the international scene, Moscow warned Finland on Thursday it would face consequences as it seeks to apply for NATO membership. Finland must join the NATO military alliance without delay, the country's president and prime minister confirmed on Thursday. In a major policy shift for the country, triggered by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Moscow said the move was definitely a threat and that it was ready to respond. Having long warned Finland of consequences should it choose to join NATO, the Kremlin added that the expansion of the military bloc would not make Europe or the world more stable. But Finland's neighbour Sweden is also close to a decision on asking to join NATO after decades of following a neutral path. The announcement represents a huge setback for Russia, which had partly attempted to justify its invasion of Ukraine as a means to protect itself from NATO's eastwards expansion. The Finnish parliament will debate the announcement on Monday. Foreign Minister Pekka Havisto told EU lawmakers the move would improve security in the Baltic Sea region. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has altered the European and Finnish security environment. However, Finland is not facing an immediate military threat. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters that Russia wanted to avoid a direct clash with NATO, but that Moscow was prepared to make a decisive response to anyone that tried to hinder Russia's special military operation in Ukraine. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.